Hello and welcome to this Google Ads optimization series with me, Bren Hamill. Over the course of the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be releasing one video per week, going through a Google Ads hack, tip, or optimization process that will allow you to optimize your Google Ad campaigns, giving you lower cost per leads or lower cost per sales, depending upon your business model. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be covering negative keywords. I'm gonna go through what are negative keywords, how they work, how you can do the research around negative keywords and how you can use them within your management. So without any further conversation, let me jump over to my computer and we'll get started with today's tutorial. Okay, here we are back at my computer. And first things being first, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. That way you get a notification when I release each of the optimization videos. So what are negative keywords? Negative keywords allow you to prevent your Google ads for showing for keywords that you deem that have low intent based around your products and services or are completely unrelated to your products and services. They are hugely powerful and typically underutilized by many Google ad accounts. Matter of fact, uh, I committed, uh, I conducted, sorry, a Google ads audit on a business uh, just recently uh, spending around about thirty to forty thousand dollars per month with their Google Ad campaigns. Believe it or not, the last four and a half years they've had no use of negative keywords. In the order of that, I calculated they had wasted six hundred eighty-one thousand dollars in just wasted spend, triggering keywords that have not produced one single conversion. So that's one of the main benefits of negative keywords, and I, I want to talk to you about uh, just a couple of them. The first one's obviously cutting out that wasted spend. Uh, that's first and foremost, and obviously that has a tremendous effect on your return on investment and conversion rates, etc. The next one is it increases click-through rates of your ads. Now, which in turn helps increase your quality score. Now, the increase in quality score gives you the ability to lower your cost per clicks, which with all things being equal and you've got no improvements in conversion rate, you're getting that lower cost per lead or lower cost per sale. So, fantastic result. The matter of fact is though, as you start to cut out those unrelated and low intent keyword phrases triggering your ads, you actually get a conversion rate boost. Now this helps fantastically well because it has compounding nature with the lower cost per clicks. So combine the two, you're getting a, a far more significant lower cost per lead or cost per sale. So it, it just stresses the point on why negative keywords are so important. So what I want to talk to you about now is the keyword match types relating to negative keywords. Now, before I get started talking about the match types in relation to the search network, I want to talk to you really, really quickly about the GDN, the Google Display Network, and the YouTube Network. It's important to note when optimizing negative keywords or using negative keywords on those two networks that they use exact match only. There are no different match types, so be careful about ensuring that you're using plurals, etc., creating different variations of the keywords to make sure that you're covering you know, your backside, so to speak. And uh, so yeah, the GDN, YouTube network, important to note, exact match only. The search network works a bit differently. It, uh, it uses match types very similar to ordinary keyword phrases. So still uses broad match, exact match, and phrase match. And I want to quickly run through those match types really quickly and how they apply and how you can use them. So first up, we have broad match. Now, broad match works very similar to ordinary keyword phrases, and our ads will still trigger for the top two keywords, but they will not trigger for the bottom three because they haven't. Uh, the top two do not contain both of these words in any way, shape, or form. It will the ads will not show for the bottom because uh, they have the the negative keyword phrase running in order, uh, containing uh, running back to front or running in in any uh, order. So our ads will be blocked from these search queries inputted by users. So it's kind of pretty easy to understand, but I think this example kind of uh, drives that nail home for us. Phrase match is very similar to ordinary phrase match. Uh, it's, it's pretty much actually identical in, in many, many, way, many ways. And uh, we can see that our ads show for the top two and the second to last option. 
because it's not running the phrase in the same order between uh, as it's shown within the quotation mark. So we can see running shoes and running shoes, and obviously down the bottom it's uh, running shoes. It ads will not show for that for for those two particular keyword phrases. And obviously, exact match is uh, is pretty self-explanatory. But again, just to drive uh, to drive everything home, we have all our ads show for here because uh, it's. Uh, it may contain such here running shoes, but it has to, uh, to, for it to be blocked as a keyword phrase, it can't have any additional keyword phrases surrounding it, such as we have with blue running shoes. And so for this set of examples, the only time our ad would be blocked would be for the bottom example, when there's no additional keyword phrases in and around this search query, and it is identical in terms of the running order between the, the square brackets located at the top there. So. It's very important to understand the match types because they can help you manage your campaign. So, and later in the video, actually, I'm going to uh, reveal a really fantastic management technique to use negative keywords that uh, not many accounts uh, use. But when you do use them, uh, you'll get even further decreases in cost per click, further increases in conversion rate, which is you know what we're all hoping for with our management, and it's the ultimate goal of this actual video series. So here we are at a dummy Google Ads campaign. I actually just picked a random business a couple of months ago to run some ads to just a couple of hundred dollars just for the sake of this video series actually, just to have some data to be able to go through and show you how to optimize your campaign. So there's no client information and things of that nature. So what we wanna do is jump in and show you a couple of ways to research negatives. So if you've just launched your campaign, uh, and it's been running for a couple of days, this is an activity that you want to be undertaking probably every day to every three days for the for the first 30 days. Then break it out to once a week, then bi-weekly, and I like to keep it at weekly, but if you're running this yourself in-house as a business owner, you may want to run it bi-weekly or monthly, depending upon the time that you have to dedicate towards the management. So with that being said, uh, even if your account's been running for six years, it doesn't matter. This is still a process that you still want to be undertaking, ideally, uh, weekly and more often if your campaign's quite large. So what we wanna do, we're in our dummy campaign and as a campaign as a whole, you can do this at the ad group level and the campaign level. And I'll show you why you wanna do it at the ad group level later when I reveal that uh, fantastic uh, management technique that has to do with negative keywords. So to find negative keywords for a running campaign, we wanna to come to the keyword tab, search over to, uh, sorry, scroll over to search terms and these are the exact search queries that are triggering the ads in this dummy account. So these are real search queries running real money, running real ads, just uh, just to a, a random business that, I, I, that, that doesn't even know that I actually ran the ads for. So what we can see here, it, it's really interesting and it's really important. So hypothetically, in this business, we're selling walk-in bathtubs. So we need to keep the intent in mind that we are actually trying to sell walk-in bathtubs. So with your products and services, what, what is the ideal intent? And what I mean by that is are designs applicable? No, no I don't do designs. I'm not building custom walk-in bathtubs. So what I'll do is I'll copy this and I will paste that into an Excel spreadsheet or into a notepad file. And I'll come through with master bath ideas. Again, ideas, I don't really want ideas. I want people that are ready to buy. Again, that goes into the Excel spreadsheet or notepad file. Now we've got a, quite a long search query here that we might be able to get a couple out of. DIY, well, I might not be, want to be associated with DIY. Again, that one goes into a different line. Conversion goes into a different line, etc. Medical, I'm not dealing with medical walk-in bathtubs. Uh, furniture, I'm not. So we, we might get a couple of negative keywords that we don't want to be associated with, with just the one search query. So what you want to do, there's not a huge amount of data here we've only uh, we've only got 15 search queries here that in a couple have been triggered quite a few times now what you'd want to do is you want to go through you might have hundreds or thousands of tens of thousands you want to go through as many as you can and uh, try and go through as, as the entire list if possible and definitely start by uh, most impressions down to least impressions i like that because it can have the the, the if you don't have great levels of concentration uh, etc um, or you're going to do this only periodically, it will allow you to improve your quality score uh, the quickest because you, you're getting rid of the negative keywords that are taking the most impressions. So with that being said, what we want to do now is we've got our spreadsheet. 
Now, what I want to talk to you about now is what happens if you're just starting a campaign. You haven't quite launched yet and you want to research negative so you can start on the best possible foundation. I have the solution for you. So what I recommend is coming over to Google and typing in KParser Suggest and you come to kparser.com. It's a fantastic tool that does have a paid version but you can get away with the free uh, version if you'd like. Now what you want to do is input a couple of your keywords one at a time. So walk, oh, sorry, uh, walk in bath tubs for instance. And we just want to make sure that the settings are correct. You can select the location I'm here in Australia. Uh, might be a client for the United States, UK, you might be in the UK, you might be in the United States, so on and so forth. Make sure you've got uh, Google selected and obviously your language, you can select uh, the variations around uh, the different languages and what uh, what market you uh, participate in. So what we do is we, we press the start button and it starts to queue a whole bunch of search queries and starts to discover keyword phrases in and around walk-in bathtubs, which is fantastic. And to the right, why I like this tool some than others, and it's definitely nice if you do pay for it. I pay for it, but I wanted to show you how to use it with the free version. Now you let this run, it can take up to 30 minutes. Sometimes it does take a little bit longer. So you let this run, carry on with some more work and come back. Now I'm, I'm not gonna wait um, because I don't really wanna wait. I suppose that's the reason. And uh, so what, what I would do, this would, would this would have been finished and we'd have a whole bunch of single keywords here that I can evaluate really quickly and say which are associated with, that I want to be associated with or have, uh, or, or do not want to be associated with or have good intent or have low intent. So for instance, we might come in here and we want to add jets to our uh, spreadsheet or notepad file, images, uh, de uh, depot, depot, depot. Uh, installation we might not we might just be selling them we might not be an installation company photos uh, different uh, brands etc a cola might be a brand that we don't sell etc so it, it's kind of obvious how you can quickly run through this list really really quickly without having to read large search queries as the examples I showed you just before uh, so I like this tool I highly recommend using it I do recommend using it even if your campaign has been running even for a good period of time. So this is a really, really quick way to get negative keywords and, uh, oh, sorry, for brand new accounts. So uh, now we're gonna move on to uh, how to implement negative keywords onto your account. Here we are at our dummy campaign and now we want to be adding the negative keywords to our campaigns to give us that further optimization and to prevent our ad showing for irrelevant keyword phrases or low intent keyword phrases. Now, it, it's really, really simple to do this. Now, we want to scroll down to the keywords tab within campaigns if you're adding them to the campaign level uh, or to the ad group if you're adding them to the ad group level, which we'll touch upon in a few moments time. We wanna scroll over to the negative keywords tab and I've added a few because, uh, funny enough, it's taken me a few takes to get this uh, video correct because of, uh, oh, I just keep on muddling up different types of words and things of that nature. So a uh, little bit of honesty there. Uh, so I've added a few. So we I found Bliss, Dog, Cola, Toronto, etc. And so to add your keywords, you want to click the plus sign, make sure that you're in the right campaign here, and you just simply copy and paste your list here. So again, it would be Bliss, I'd be copying, it would be uh, Cola, uh, etc and you would be pasting quite a large list depending upon how much research you undertook. So it, it definitely, it's not a case of bigger is better. It's quality, far supersedes size, it, definitely in this case. So that's important. So once you've done that, you can create a list. So if you've got general kind of negative keywords, you've got product specific or industry specific, etc. I like to keep them in lists. You can do the same if you like. Uh, and then you simply press save. Once you've pressed save, it gets added to this list just like this. So it's extremely simple. Again, just to, to reiterate, this is a process you wanna be undertaking on a regular basis. More often if your campaign's new and slightly less often if your campaign's up and running. So the management technique. So as we come back to the ad groups, we want to evaluate ad groups individually. Definitely it's a lot more work, but it's the, it's the best way to do it. Again, quality over speed here. So we want to come into the ad group. So this exact match, we want to get out of the exact match. And what we want to do is we want to come into search terms. Now this is purely hypothetical. You should have conversion tracking set up. That's non-negotiable. It has to be set up. 
So you would have the conversion columns here, again, as this is a dummy campaign that has no data. Uh, it's completely useless. So what we have here is you want conversion data. So hypothetically, we have a, a, we have a keyword phrase such as walk in bathtub that's getting fantastic search volume and just a super conversion rate. And we want to get more from that because it might be averaging position five. But we know this can this keyword is, is just working gangbusters. The cost per lead or the cost per sale is fantastic. How do I get more from it? Well, what we want to do is put those keywords into an Excel spreadsheet. And we want to come back uh, to the ad group level and we want to create exact match ad groups for that one particular C, uh, keyword phrase. So we have walk-in bathtub here, exact. Because I noticed that the walk-in bathtub keyword was getting good search volume, uh, fantastic conversion rates. I want to get more from it. So typically in this ad group with the modified raw match, I'm bidding $1.65 getting a position of hypothetically five. Now I want to get a higher position. I want more clicks because I'm, I'm going to get more leads. I'm going to get more sales. So I, I come back to the ad group level and I create this exact match keyword phrase, walk-in bathtub. I'm now bidding 225 and I might be getting, again, this is just a hypothetical. I was perhaps getting 5.55, now I'm getting 4.5. These are just hypothetical numbers, but the theory is sound. Now, what happens is we start to get a larger search impression share for that particular keyword phrase. The conversion rate should stay the same or if not increase because now we are able to write an even better ad for this exact keyword phrase. So click through rate goes up, cost per click goes down, conversion rate goes up because it adds more, uh, more specific to the keyword uh, intent. And even to the point of you can create specific landing pages for this exact keyword phrase. Now that sounds like a lot of work and it can be, but if the keyword phrase is so good, it's definitely worth it. Or you actually can now send people to the more desirable page. You might have a more desirable page depending upon. Get them to the page as quickly as possible. So what we want to do now that we've created this exact match keyword ad group, we want to go back now to the modify broad match ad group, come back into the search uh, to the negative keyword section and add it as an, as an exact match. We do not want the exact match keyword phrase in which we just made an exact match ad group for to show in this ad group. Now that's a little bit of a mouthful. Uh, so maybe a simpler way to put it is now that this, uh, sorry, uh, this ad group and keyword will never trigger the exact match keyword phrase of walk in bathtub. That will only happen with the other ad group. So we have more specific ads for that exact match. Now, it's probably not the best uh, kind of example because obviously I'm using walk in bathtub here as a modified broad match, etc. So, um, but it, it gives you the theory and how to apply it. Yes, it is more work but the results can be an improvement of around about 15 to 30% as you get more granular and more specific. So it's definitely very useful, a very useful management technique. So this wraps up the tutorial for negative keywords. I hope you've enjoyed the start of this Google Ads optimization series. I will and have enjoyed making all my videos up until now and I'm especially excited about this uh, Google Ads optimization series. Don't forget to click that subscribe button to make sure that you're getting this valuable information to improve your own ads. Uh, obviously, there's no op uh, obligation. There's, I'm not trying to sell anything or anything of that nature. It's purely helpful. Uh, so don't forget to click that subscribe button. If you want to uh, have a conversation with me, again, I'm not trying to sell you anything. It's just about a good conversation. Uh, I think I enjoy the conversations more than the people do. Come to my website, click that button. Uh, have a chat. There's no pressure. There's no obligation. We just have a chat typically for 30 minutes, maybe even 60 minutes. Some, some do go for around about a 60 minute mark. I go through your Google AdWords, your Facebook stuff, your Google Analytics, uh, and we talk about it, how you can get more from your own marketing. It, you can do it. Um, that, that's the thing. Or you can go back to the agency that you're working with and say, hey, um, how about you start doing this? I've, I've heard that this is, uh, this is some, some better ways to do some things. So, uh, if you want to schedule in a conversation like that, come to my website at brenhamill.com and uh, fill in that form and yeah, we'll have a good conversation. With that being said, let's wrap up the video. Don't forget, click the, uh, don't forget to click that subscribe button, comment below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.